States of America celebrates its 234th uh, birthday today. And uh, as we celebrate uh, our, our nation's birth, uh, I am amazed by uh, how young our nation is. This, this, what is called an experiment in democracy, an experiment in liberty uh, that was uh, taken in 1776. I mean, that's not that long ago. If you have been to Europe, you will know that there are countries uh, really around the globe uh, that are, um, they can look at a thousand years of history. Uh, we are looking uh, at just over, you know, 200 years of history. We are still a young nation. That means we need to be vigilant uh, in regard to uh, the principles upon which we were founded, especially as we see those that are coming in to rewrite history, those that are coming in to say that uh, we should be politically correct and write God out of our history and take the Bible out and take God out. And when we do, we can see, as our founding fathers have said, we're in deep, deep trouble if we do that. Four lives speak to the uh, duration of our nation's history. Listen to this. I, I think of this uh, each July 4th because I think it's so amazing to speak to how young we are as a nation. When Thomas Jefferson died, Abraham Lincoln was a a young man of 17 years of age. When Lincoln was assassinated, Woodrow Wilson was a boy of eight. When Woodrow Wilson died, Ronald Reagan was a boy of 12. That brings us all the way up to current uh, date, pretty close to current date, just with four lives. Um, The Declaration of Independence, and one thing that really stood out to me as I was looking through so many things, and by the way, um, the last song that we sang, the Battle Hymn of the Republic, Uh, That was composed by Julia Ward Howe uh, when she had just visited our Civil War troops. And uh, it was a tune that was already uh, uh, there, uh, but had different words. It was a well-known tune of the day. She put the lyrics that she put to it that we now know as the Battle Hymn of the Republic. Then she went, and and, uh, I don't know if she sang it or if the President Lincoln simply read it, or I think he heard it somehow. And when he heard the Battle Hymn of the Republic for the very first time, he wept. I mean, the power behind those words. That is a worship song to God uh, as we sing glory, glory, hallelujah. So I was glad that we stood to honor God in that way. The Declaration of Independence, the signing of the Declaration in 1776, the Declaration of Independence, uh, of Independence was a declaration of intent. I want you to catch this. The Declaration of Independence was the signing of a declaration of intent that we would be independent, but it would take a struggle and a battle some seven years before the time that the Constitution could be written. And so that Declaration of of Independence, that Declaration of Intent, was not the culmination of independence. It was a Declaration of Intent, not the culmination. Now, it's important to see that because we're going to look at this concept for a moment because, believe it or not, July 4 is not in the Bible. And, uh, and, you know, the Declaration of Independence is not in the Bible. But we draw from biblical principles when we talk about the principles upon which our nation was founded. Uh, The last scripture to be given in that video, video is the scripture that we find in Leviticus talking about proclaiming liberty to the inhabitants of the land. That is written on, inscribed on, our liberty bell. You cannot take those principles that are found in the Declaration of Independence, uh, you cannot strip the Bible away and still have that sense of what liberty and freedom is all about. We draw liberty from the Bible. We draw freedom from the Bible. And we know that the one who truly sets us free is the Lord Jesus Christ. And so these founding fathers drew from the scriptures in order to forge that document. We have certain rights, the right uh, to liberty, to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Those are rights that we are endowed with, endowed with by whom? By our creator, according to the founding fathers. Not by any man, not by any document, but because our creator, God himself, endows us with these rights. These rights must be fought for. These rights must be preserved. It is possible that we could come to the place where we would lose the understanding of what true freedom and true liberty is all about if we are not vigilant in our generation to know that those rights come from God himself, that that liberty is the liberty proclaimed 
in the scriptures. If we lose sight of that, we can lose the liberty and the freedom for which so many soldiers have fought in battles throughout the last 234 years, including the Revolutionary War. George Washington sent a letter to his wife, Martha. I want you to listen to this letter and recognize that it was written on July 3, July 3, 1776. He says, in a few days, you will see a declaration setting forth the causes which have impelled us to this mighty revolution and the reasons which will justify it in the sight of God. I am fully aware of the blood and treasure that it will cost to maintain this declaration and support and defend these states. Yes, through all the gloom, I can see the rays of ravishing light and glory. That was a statement by uh, George Washington to his wife where he was saying that this declaration will be fought for. It isn't enough to declare the intent. It is, it is something that's going to need to be a struggle, but we're going to win it, and we're going to proclaim that liberty not only as an ideal, but we're going to proclaim it as something that we own, that we have, that's a part of our nation and who we are. Let's look in the book of Numbers for a moment. We are going to see something that predates the Declaration of Independence but speaks to this same theme and this same truth, that there is intent and then that intent is proclaimed, but then there needs to be a, a, a sense in which you go through a struggle and a battle to seize and to subdue in order to be able to have what you, what you have heard to be God's intent for your life. And you know, as our, as our nation, again, we see the battle that has taken place for us to be able to have the freedom that we have. There are men and women that are across the globe that are in a struggle. And that struggle is there as our military because they are going to defend our freedoms and defend our rights. In Numbers, the 13th chapter, the Bible says in the first two verses, the Lord said to Moses, send some men to explore the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the Israelites. From each uh, ancestral tribe, send one of its leaders. I want, want to read that again. The Lord said to Moses, send some men to explore the land of Canaan. Now, I want you to catch the next uh, a verse here, the next statement, which I am giving to the, to the Israelites, which I am giving to the Israelites. It wasn't a question about it. God was giving the land to the Israelites. God was proclaiming to Moses that the land would belong to the Israelites. So it's an understood intent, but the Israelites don't have the land yet. It's a, it's a declared intent. There are moments in which in our lives we need to declare the intentions of the Lord over our lives. 